Here now is H.M.S. Richards, the voice of prophecy speaker. His subject, the infinite future of man. A member of our King's Herald's Quartet has just called my attention to an advertisement in a late issue of a magazine with international circulation, published in its main office in North America. It contains a statement regarding the launching of ESV Vanguard, the Earth satellite vehicle, which is soon to take its place in history as man's first exploratory trip in an attempt to conquer space itself. The satellite is to be carried into its place by a multistage rocket. It is expected that the launching will take place sometime during the International Geophysical Year, July 1957 to December 1958. The rocket is to give the satellite a top speed of about 18,000 miles an hour. Which high velocity is calculated to balance the Earth's gravitational pull? It is expected that this small man-made moon, for that's what it really is, will circle the Earth at a height of about 200 miles and will be able to make its entire journey around the Earth once every 90 minutes for several days. Then the cumulative drag of the molecules of the atmosphere at that great height will gradually draw it closer to the Earth. Finally, the friction of the denser air will cause it to burn up much after the fashion of a shooting star. The high point of interest in this advertisement is the statement that when this takes place and we are able to train our binoculars on a brilliant point of light in the sky, we shall be looking at an in intimation, as he puts it, of the infinite future of man, something he will provide for himself by his own genius, his scientific discoveries, his ability to organize, to plan, to accomplish. The same magazine carries another full-page ad entitled, Reaching for the Moon, from which we quote, Once it meant the impossible. Today it's a progress report of scientific research. But is man's future, his infinite future, in his own hands to this extent? Will he build an eternal civilization as once he attempted to build the Tower of Babel that he might reach to heaven? So far he has been utterly unable to build a peaceful world and to eliminate war, old age, sickness, and death. The question among a great many thinkers today might be put this way. Does man have a future, not to mention an infinite future? We believe that the only real answer to such a question is found in the pages of Holy Writ. Only God who created man, and who is himself from eternity to eternity, and knows the end from the beginning, can answer that question. In his answer, I think we shall see that man does have a future, and that that future is actually infinite. But neither that future nor its infinitude depends upon man's works, inventions, factories, scientific acumen, his organizational abilities, or his egotistical attainments. First of all, what was God's purpose in creating this earth? The answer is in Isaiah 45:18. Thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it. He hath established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. If that's God's plan, it will be carried out. This earth will be inhabited. It will not lie dark, frozen, without inhabitants, as some of our philosophical scientists declare. And God's pleasure is revealed in this. For we read in Revelation 4.11, For thy pleasure they are and were created. Since God himself is holy, he created holy beings to live upon this earth. And since he is unchangeable, we may be sure that some day, in spite of the problem of human sin and failure, his original purpose will be carried out. For we read his words in Isaiah 46.10, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. So you see, if we really believe the Holy Scriptures, we can be real optimists. For we read in Numbers 14.21, But as truly as I live, saith the Lord, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. There is truly a time coming, spoken of as the time of restitution of all things. Acts 3.21 All that was lost in Adam is to be restored in Christ. As we read in Luke 19.10, 
Jesus came to seek and save that which was lost. Now what was lost? To answer that, we must discover what God gave man in the beginning. First, he gave him life, Genesis 2.7. He gave him a righteous character, Genesis 1.26, made in God's image. He gave man a home in a beautiful world, Easter in Eden, Genesis 2.8. He gave man dominion over the earth, Genesis 1.26. But through his own willfulness and denial of the authority and supremacy of God, he lost these things which were given to him. First he lost his life, for Adam sinned, and the wages of sin is death, Romans 6.23. Second, he lost his righteous character. When Adam sinned, for all unrighteousness is sin, 1 John 5.7. He lost his home. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden, Genesis 3.23. Four, he lost his dominion. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same as he brought in bondage, Second Peter 2.19. He was overcome by Satan, who became the prince of this world and claimed the rulership of it. And Christ did not dispute the claim. Luke 4, verse 5 and onward. Adam went forth as the servant of sin and Satan into a world under the curse. John 8.34. Now, what does Christ restore? The same four gifts. First, he restores life. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 6.23 2. He restores character. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, a new creation. Old things are passed away. 2 Corinthians 5.17 It is through the power of God exercised in our hearts by the Holy Spirit that we are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. 2 Corinthians 3.18 And by the way, the Holy Sabbath is a symbol, a sign of this creative, sanctifying power, as we read in Ezekiel 20, verse 12. 3. Christ will restore our home in a beautiful new world. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Matthew 6.10 and God shall send Jesus Christ, who shall bring in the restitution of all things. Acts 3.20 And we look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. 2 Peter 3.13 For Christ restores man to his dominion. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as also I overcame, and am set down with my Father in his throne. Revelation 3.21 and so this is the picture of the infinite future of man. And it comes solely through the redemption offered in Christ. Everything lost in Adam, restored in Christ. Life, character, home, worldwide dominion. And here's a brief scriptural picture of that infinite future. First, the new Jerusalem, the capital city of the earth, regenerated, comes down from God out of heaven. Not a small mechanical satellite which in a few days burns itself out in a flash of oxidized metal, but a city never built with hands, gleaming down the pathway of the skies. Read the beautiful story for yourself in Revelation 21 and 22 of that city where there is no night. First the city where there is no night. And then God himself dwells with men. Tabernacles with them, they shall see his face. Revelation 21.3 In the third place, regular Sabbath worship in this glorious city. Isaiah 66.23 And four, country life with homes. They shall build houses and inhabit them, plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. Isaiah 65.21 There be no sickness. The inhabitants shall not say, I am sick. And the people that dwell therein shall be forgiven their iniquities. Isaiah 33:24 No pain, no sorrow, no crying, above all, no death, for the former things are passed away. Revelation 21:4 Changed nature of the animal world. Read it here in Isaiah 11:6 to 9. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, saith the Lord. The earth itself will be beautiful and fruitful. Tremendous changes are ahead for those who really have the optimistic forward look. 
And we shall know each other there, as we read in 1 Corinthians 13, 12. We shall know even as we are known. We cannot grasp it all now any more than we can grasp in its fullness the glory and mystery of the cross, which makes the infinite future possible. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Can we comprehend that? Never. The cross of Christ with its atoning sacrifice will be the science and the song of the redeemed through unending ages. Today we must look forward to the days to come. For eye hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. 1 Corinthians 2.9 the wonders of the cross, of God's redeeming love, and of man's infinite future, thereby secured. Friend, are we going to have a part in that infinite future? Will we be there? Are we getting ready for it? Back in the old days of slavery, someone asked a body servant whether or not his master was going to heaven. No, he said, my master never goes anywhere without telling me, and he always takes several days to get ready. He hasn't said anything to me about it, and he hasn't been getting ready, so I know he isn't going. Are we getting ready? Are we planning to go to heaven rather than building spaceships or satellites, controlled or uncontrolled? Have we given our hearts to God who created the universe with its farthest galaxies and knows the mystery of it all? Give your heart to him today and be at peace. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. Read those words of John 3.17. Believe them. Receive them into your heart. And so to everyone who will receive it, Christ gives faith in the infinite future of man, both in heaven and in earth.